It is well accepted that survivors of stroke have reduced aerobic capacity compared to healthy age match controls. We know that this decrease in aerobic capacity limits these stroke survivors in their daily life. Although we do know that stroke survivors are capable of improving their aerobic capacity with exercise, not all stroke survivors show improvement even with the same exercise program. The aim of this project was to determine what factors predict improvement in aerobic capacity among our chronic stroke survivors participating in an aerobic cycling intervention. This was an analysis of two similar randomized controlled trials with very similar groups. Following the st stress test, individuals were randomized to one of three groups. The first group was forced exercise plus repetitive task practice, or RTP, which is a type of arm therapy. For the forced exercise group, they cycled for 45 minutes on a bike with a motor in it, which forces them to pedal approximately 30% faster than they would on their own. We monitored their heart rate and cued them to keep exercising at 60 to 80% of their heart rate reserve, which is a vigorous intensity. The voluntary exercise group followed the same format, except they used this different bike that did not have a motor. They simply pedaled at their self-selected speed, although we still monitored their heart rate and cued them to remain 60 to 80% of their heart rate reserve. The control group was slightly different between the two studies but they were combined for the purposes of this analysis because neither of them were aerobic groups. They either received 90 minutes total of RTP or 45 minutes of stroke education followed by 45 minutes of RTP. Among the three groups, there were no significant differences between demographics and most of the exercise variables were not statistically different between the forced and voluntary exercise groups, with the exception of cadence. The forced exercise group exercised at a significantly higher cadence than the voluntary exercise group. Looking at the improvement in aerobic capacity from baseline to post intervention, we can see here that the forced exercise group slightly improved, but this was not statistically significant. The voluntary group improved significantly in their aerobic capacity, and the control group remained approximately the same. However, we did know that there was quite a bit of variability among these participants. So we looked at this a different way. Each of these columns indicates a single participant with the color indicating their group. Blue was forced exercise, yellow was voluntary, and red was control. We further divided this into three categories. Patients who declined in their aerobic capacity, patients who remained approximately the same, and patients who significantly improved their aerobic capacity. I'm looking at the aerobic intensity and cadence of these three subgroups, we saw that their aerobic intensity was not significantly different. However, the ones, the patients who improved the most in aerobic capacity cycled the fastest, 76 RPM on average for the group that improved the most compared to 63 RPM for the groups that declined or remained about the same. And in fact, our analysis revealed that higher cadence and lower baseline VO2 peak were most predictive of improvement in aerobic capacity following the intervention. So this suggests that to maximize the benefits of aerobic exercise, stroke survivors should be encouraged to exercise at higher rates. On a recumbent bike, this would be at least 60 RPM, but preferably over 70 RPM. And importantly, stroke survivors with low baseline aerobic capacity should still be encouraged to engage in aerobic exercise as long as it's medically safe, as they may have the most to gain 